It's the unspeakable myth. The one you just can't flush away. There's poo everywhere. Is there more than toothpaste on that brush? There's actually a bunch of myths around and surrounding bathrooms and cleanliness and ideas of what the clean parts of our house are. But actually, I think the main idea behind this myth is that the bristles of a wet toothbrush make an ideal collection surface for things like airborne bacteria. There's no rosy way to say this, so let's cut to the chase. What we're talking about here is fecal coliform bacteria, the bacteria that lives well, you know where. The belief is that you shouldn't leave your toothbrush in the bathroom, and particularly not too close to the toilet, because there's all sorts of bacteria floating in the air, which ends up on your toothbrush and therefore in your mouth. Adam, you know, before we even start this experiment, we should probably do a simple test to see whether the toilet actually produces an aerosol. You mean like whether when it's flushing, it actually makes little droplets and vapor that go everywhere? Exactly. Some color in the water, and Adam's got any flying droplets covered. Ready? Go. Oh, I see some drops. All right, well, there you go. The aerosol part of the myth is definitely true. Yeah, these are probably the least of our worries because we can see these and they're big, heavy drops. What we should be concerned about, I think, are the ones that we don't see that are little tiny things that may be going who knows where. But can those tiny droplets drift all the way to your toothbrush? The Mythbusters aim to find out. Well, do we have a plan? Of course we have a plan. This is Mythbusters. The reason we've got so many toothbrushes here is because we want to lay out a really broad test pattern to see if distance from the toilet, orientation to the toilet, and height from the toilet affect the number of fecal coliforms that we can find when we test the toothbrushes. Adam has clearly given this whole dirty toothbrush thing an awful lot of thought. In no time, he's fitting out the bathroom in the Mythbusters workshop. I'm gonna use this PVC and some fittings to make a pair of toothbrush racks. I'll show the rig begins. Forget fancy blueprints, he's making it up as he goes along. It only has to last for a month. Ow! It's not pretty, but it'll do. What the hell have you done in my bathroom? We are going to set up 24 toothbrushes in this, and every morning we'll have a protocol. And we will each be responsible to take each toothbrush wash it in distilled water so we don't cross-contaminate, and put the wet toothbrush back. Then there will also be two controlled toothbrushes on top of the toilet that we will brush our teeth with, and at the end of a month, we will check and do fecal coliform tests on the toothbrushes and see which ones have gathered the most. Next up, the brushes. The guys will wash their hands with antibacterial soap every time before they touch them to prevent possible contamination. And importantly for the experiment, this bathroom will stay open for business. A chart will keep track of exactly how much business is getting done. What do you think one, two, and three would be? One would be? Urine. Two would be? Fecal matter. And three? I don't know, what's number three? Let's say perhaps a, uh, an aerated approach to dispersing fecal matter. <laughs> For a breath of fresh air, two more brushes will be kept in the office, away from the bathroom. Jamie, these are our uh, external controls, uncontaminated toothbrushes outside of all the experimental conditions. We'll rub these with a little toothpaste and rinse them with the water as well. If fecal coliform bacteria are found out here, they'll be embarrassed looks all round. It'll take a month, but the Mythbusters hope to answer a question that lurks in every bathroom. Is that toothbrush safe? The Mythbusters have become slaves to dental hygiene. Every morning, they carefully wash their hands, put toothpaste on each of 24 brushes, and rinse them off again using distilled water. Lesson one, never give Adam a squirt gun. Hey! <laughs> oh, sorry, Paul. <laughs> <laughs>
Next, they clean their teeth using two very special brushes. We're using the ones that were on the top of the toilet, the closest ones. At the end of the month, they'll test the brushes for fecal coliform bacteria. If nothing else, they've busted the myth that television is a glamorous industry. Today, it's toilet bowl close-ups. Mate, you've reached the pinnacle of your uh, career. They couldn't get any better than this, could it? Toilets and cleanliness are the subject of many an urban legend, including this one. There's a young couple honeymooning somewhere in the Caribbean, and they come back to their room and they see that it's been ransacked. They've been burgled of just about everything. There's only two things remaining, their camera and their toothbrushes. So they go out and they purchase new clothes and other necessities, and they end up having a fantastic time. So they get home and they develop their film. And upon looking at the different photographs, they get to one that, what's that? And they notice that one thief has taken a picture of the other thief mooning and the picture is of his backside with their toothbrushes sticking out. Jamie and Adam aren't swallowing any of this myth. But they are professionals, and they're on the scent of something big. You know, given that I've had toothbrushes sitting near toilets for nigh on 30 years at this point, 35 years, it doesn't bother me at all. It's a long, boring, dirty job ahead. But if anyone's qualified for this sort of work, it's the Mythbusters. There's absolutely nothing cute about the toothbrush surprise. I'd like to point out the difference between my toothbrush and Jamie's toothbrush. Bring it up. Jamie's is neat and perfect. Mine is absolutely trashed. <laughs> I don't know what that says. The only good news, this is the last day before the brushes will be tested. I get them wet, and then I foam the toothpaste on, and then I rinse them out. We could do a myth about how fast paint dries. For the last month, they've been testing the myth that microscopic fecal coliforms can waft from your toilet onto your toothbrush when you flush. A month is a long time for this kind of work. Watch every action-packed second as water and toothpaste meet in a fecal coliform farm of total destruction. To see if there really is something to worry about, the Mythbusters have called on expert microbiologist Dr. Joanne Engel. She's going to subject the Mythbusters bathroom to more scrutiny than is strictly desirable. So I'm taking the toothbrush and I'm spreading it on the auger here. So if there's a lot of bacteria on here, it'll grow. And then I'm also dipping it into this bacterial broth. And again, if there's just even a couple of bacteria on here, it'll grow overnight after I uh, incubate these in a nice warm oven. Every single toothbrush is sampled. These are the ones that we've actually been using to brush our okay. teeth. It's been a very busy bathroom. But there's also the two controls kept out in the kitchen. This is the first time either of these toothbrushes has been in the bathroom. Okay. okay. But they've been brushed with, Yes. Right? They've undergone the same treatment. But I'm going to incubate them in a 37 degree uh, oven overnight, and if there are bacteria on here, we should be able to see them. The whole gang is relieved to finally be getting out of that little bathroom. And soon, they'll know for sure if their toothbrushes hold an unwelcome surprise. <laughs> Flush with success, the men now have to see the woman. The toothbrush surprise results are in. Did we actually find any fecal coliform on the toothbrushes? Uh, well, we did, but um, in fact, all the toothbrushes. That'll leave a bad taste in your mouth, but the slides don't lie. Those little pink dots are fecal coliforms found on the brushes, and it made no difference how near or far they were from the toilet. Can we say that the exposure to the bathroom or to the air contaminated these with a small amount of fecal coliform? 
Uh, so that'd be one interpretation, mm -hmm. but re recall that you um, also exposed these guys to distilled water and some toothpaste, and they got handled a little bit. So it could have also come from other sources as well. But brace yourself, folks, there's more. Remember those control toothbrushes kept outside the bathroom. <laughs> There was also fecal coliform on our controls, which were nowhere near the bathroom. That's right. That's uh, these guys here. So they have some uh, pink colonies on them, too. Unpleasant as it seems, fecal coliforms are virtually an unavoidable part of daily living. But it's not all bad news. So, you know, this is uh, perhaps the most critical question. Should the American toothbrushing public be worried about our results that there is fecal coliform on their toothbrushes? No, I don't think they should be. It's a very low level, and as you can see, we're all happy and healthy standing here and been exposed to that. Easy for her to say. Adam and Jamie have just learned a valuable lesson. Some myths are best left unanswered. You know, we put our bodies on the line a lot on this show, but brushing my teeth with fecal coliform for a month, that, that goes just a little bit farther than I really wanted to go. There's poo everywhere. <laughs> what are we going to do?